What's up, everybody, and welcome to The New Normal. I'm Zach Giltz. With me, as usual, co-host Lindsay Runyon, and we are here to break down big church for our everyday lives. Yes, and the way that we break down big church is to give you guys just uh, tips and tricks uh, with questions throughout the week um, in a spiritual discipline, but also just where we have seen God in the scripture, sermon, and the service overall. So uh, before we even get to any of that, Zach, I'm nervous. You have an icebreaker. <laughs> I'm so excited. I don't, I, I have know. never heard your answer to this question. Oh, and no. that's okay. okay, so in Preston's sermon, mm -hmm. uh, the first example that he gave, I believe, was about a cell phone ringing in church. Mm -hmm. um, now, you and I, I'm sure, are from the era of it just, I like Preston, I don't know what my ringer sounds like. It's always on silent. Mm -hmm. But what is the most embarrassing thing that you have done or has happened to you during like a service of worship? embarrassing thing um uh i don't can't think of the most embarrassing one but this morning i was in, <laughs> in the 945 service or service while preston was preaching um and my i was looking at youtube and facebook just the, like the live service just to see and i had my volume all the way up <laughs> So you could hear this reverb and everyone turned around and like looked at me and I was like, oh, dang it, he just talked about this. So funny. I saw phone. people turning around, but I was like, I, for whatever reason, I didn't hear it. I was like, why am I really walking back here? Yeah. Yeah. No, that was me. I had my volume all the way up. So there was this like echo of Preston this morning and I was like, oh, he just talked about this. I didn't check my ringer. So that's what happened. Yeah. yeah. What about you? Um, so I grew up. Uh, as a preacher's kid. I guess I still am. I haven't grown out of that. Um, but uh, on Sundays where my mom was there, which was like 51 Sundays of the year, mm -hmm. we would sit together in the front row, right front, left, right in front of the pulpit, tight leash on this kid. I needed it. Yeah. But on the, the one Sunday a year that for whatever reason my mom was gone or we were with my grandparents, whatever, mm -hmm. I would sit in the back with the youth. And, uh, and I was a youngin, so I was in like fifth grade when this happened. So I felt cool sitting with the youth because I wasn't one yet, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'm sitting back there for whatever reason, I can't remember, but I'm able to be there. And I think we like laughed or something happened. A, a pen fell, but it was like way too loud. Um, and my dad, who was there from the pulpit, tied into his sermon, but called me by name. Like somehow the point remained on track. Well, he was, it was just like, like my son, Zach, sitting in the back right now. Let's be honest, I wasn't paying attention. But I heard that part and I about pooed myself. And I can't imagine being that embarrassed in another setting uh, with like the whole church, just kind of, and of course, like the church, everybody, you know, everybody who's there kind of ribs me afterwards. It was very, a kind ribbing, but mm. I was, it was embarrassing. Yeah. I hold that. In memory is very embarrassing moment gosh i thought, uh, the, ice, I thought the icebreaker was going to be what was your favorite phone so i'm really glad you went that way tune in next week friends your favorite phone pre-iphone oh yeah duh <laughs> not fair uh but yeah i'll have to remember that because i do want to know now so um that though brings us out of icebreaker the mm -hmm. ice has been broken let's dive deep uh, so the scripture this week is out of 1 Samuel mm -hmm. uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Uh, and Lindsay, I'm curious, out of that passage, what stood out to you? What are a couple things maybe? Yeah, yeah. So Samuel is actually one of the last kind of uh, judges um, in uh, the Old Testament. And then right, this is when we get into the kings. And this is uh, Samuel then anoints Saul and David and all that kind of stuff. So um, already Samuel has a good place in my heart. And even his call story is just really cool. Um, but for me, I thought what was interesting rereading this passage is when Samuel thinks that it's Eli that's calling him, he gets really excited, like, here I am. Um, but then when he, like, knows that it's, like, God calling him because Eli tells him, he says, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So it's almost um, this, like, posture of humility and surrender, um, but almost this, like, seriousness of, like, this command at the very beginning. Not like, I'm here to hear you. It's like, no, like, I'm here. So almost an imperative to God. Um, so I, I just think that cool contrast was just um, interesting rereading it for the billionth time. Um, but yeah, what did you think of the scripture and where did you kind of see God speaking to you? Yeah, speaking of judges, this story reminds me a lot of Gideon's story where kind of at first yeah. Gideon, 
we did a children's musical over it when I was in like second grade, but the song just stuck with me. It's like, are you sure you haven't got the wrong number? Anyways, and so Gideon's whole thing is right. Like, are you sure it's me? And in the same way, kind of Samuel's on the flip side of that, hearing the call and responding, but just not knowing where it's coming from, which I think is really interesting. Mm. Um, Cause he's actually been able, or, or you know, God has allowed him mm-hmm. to hear him, but he's thinking, well, it, it must be coming from Eli. Yeah. Um, so he goes to who he would think of, someone he respects, someone who would reasonably be calling him. And it's Eli who God empowers to point him back to God and say, no, 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 it is your master, but it's not me. Like it's God calling you. Yeah. Um, so I think just kind of that strong mentor mentee relationship that God has worked with Eli mm-hmm. so much that he's able to then turn Samuel's gaze towards God, yeah. uh, which I think is really, really cool. So that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And you didn't know this, but actually this Wednesday, uh, Bible study is on the call of Gideon in Judges. So. Dude, I love Gideon's story. I remember uh, Kendra's mom asked me, my wife, or my mother-in-law, my wife's mom, asked me uh, when we were dating what my favorite passage was. Uh, and I was like, oh, I love the story of Gideon, which is a bizarre one. <laughs> um, so anyways, I do. Big Gideon awesome. fan. Yeah. But what did you uh, kind of glean from the sermon um, and what Preston was speaking about? Yeah. Yeah, so one of the things we've been going over in youth uh, really over the last year uh, is the Shema out of Deuteronomy. Um, And that Shema in, oh, help me out here. I wrote it down in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. We did. Shema in Hebrew uh, would be the same word for listen and act uh, because there's no separation between hearing and responding. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so I think what stands out to me in that is at first, um, we see Samuel here, right? He mm-hmm. hears the call, um, but it's not until he's able to understand where the call is coming from that he can respond appropriately. Mm-hmm. And so I think in my life, oftentimes maybe I can feel uh, like I need to be doing more. I need to be doing something. I'm mm-hmm. not doing the right thing, yeah. but I might go to, you know, my dad or, or a former youth director um, or, you know, Kendra or someone and say, hey, what's missing? Mm-hmm. And without fail, they'll guide me back to God who's able to point me in the right direction. Yeah. Um, but I think it's really cool to see kind of the Old Testament continue to breathe through that Shema, of just like listen and respond. Yeah. Uh, and that we know, just like Paul's story, if he only heard God, but he didn't respond to God, if he wasn't transformed, well, then the call story isn't a call story. It's just a one-off of like, well, this guy was blind and we never heard from him again. Right. It's the same with Samuel, right? Like if he wakes up and he says, here I am, Lord, but then doesn't continue to answer that call every day, well, well then it looks a lot different. Um, and so I think for us and for me, that word Shema and the prayer of the Shema, yeah. um, Deuteronomy 6, I believe, uh, 4 through 6, uh, really breathes in that idea of listening, responding, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, mm-hmm. um, and placing that above all things so that once that radio is tuned to hear God's voice, we can actually uh, not just hear it, but, but respond to it. Um, so I think I could continue to spend that like three or four ways, but the result is the same. So. Yeah. Uh, and then the service overall, though, what were uh, some of your takeaways? This was like filled with good music. For sure, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I loved uh, Bob Appleton's scripture reading. Um, I loved how he kind of introed everything with the uh, idea of light and the Pentateuch ritual that that was and stuff and kind of giving us context um, to the overall scripture. Um, and of course, you can't uh, talk about First Samuel 3 and not sing the hymn, Here I Am, Lord. Um, so that was just really cool to kind of that closing um, just service and sending song was Here I Am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? Have I heard you call me in the night? You know. Um, just a classic. I love that. But uh, fun fact you probably didn't know, Zach, uh, I almost minored in music in undergrad. I um, mean, wow, one of I my, not know that. yeah, one of my favorite pieces uh, I, that I like listened to and wrote a paper on was actually Bach, um, his uh, Fugue in G minor, which Jun Jin played for their oh. postlude. And it was so good and brought me back to my undergrad days. So it was just cool to hear that kind of booming in the sanctuary and just the, the uh, amount of technique that Junjin has and played so well. So it was just really cool to hear. Um, but I think um, paired with that and Bill Ware's Jumping in Egypt, that mm-hmm. song at the end of uh, Ecclesia was just really cool just to see all of our congregation members and just their passion and our staff and just the way that they serve the Lord um, and the way that the Lord speaks to them through music um, and the way that they give back to, I think is really cool. And even um, 
the offertory kind of reflection song um, in the Ecclesia as well of available. I think it's just an incredible song that Lily sang so well deep within her heart um, to know that here I am, I'm available. So um, some really cool songs of just surrender and openness to the Lord, mm-hmm. um, which I think in this time um, and seeing that light was just really needed and fit well with um, where we are in just Preston's sermon as well. So it was a good overall, I guess, services and morning to figure out where the Lord is. Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, and some of the questions we would love for you guys to answer just throughout this week um, are who, so get ready, um, in your life, who do you see God's light in? So um, Preston talked a lot about just that eternal light um, that um, Samuel was kind of with and sleeping with, um, which we actually still have that representation in our sanctuary today. There's that uh, red kind of candle um, on the altar. So that's our eternal flame of the presence of God and the Holy Spirit. Um, so, so the question is in your life, um, who do you see God's light in? And the second question, um, how do they show it? Um, so if they are God's light, what are the actions or words or deeds that they do that you see, ah, yes, there's Jesus working. So, um, yeah, so continue to ponder those and discuss those with, um, your community. But Zach, what is our spiritual discipline and kind of practice for this week? Yeah, and before I get into that, I just kind of want to go back to these questions and maybe uh, highlight something that I left out of the call story, uh, which uh, is in the scripture. So if you read the scripture or watched or listened to the sermon, um, that that this idea of where does the light come from is that Eli uh, was a light that was able to kind of guide uh, Samuel's path to God, uh, just as the light in the temple had not yet gone out, right? That's what the the eternal flame um, stands for. Uh, stands for isn't the right word for it, but uh, it is. There. Mm-hmm. there we go. Cool. Um, and then, uh, but that does in fact bring us to our spiritual practice for this week, which uh, is surrender. Just like you said, um, these songs of surrender um, that God does not call us uh, to come before him perfectly. Mm-hmm. Um, but once we're called to God, we are reconciled to him. Uh, and as Wesley believes, yeah. Uh, and states our our Christian pursuit is one of perfection um, to be like Christ in the most perfect way, but we don't start there um, and yeah, but this idea of surrender is just letting go of of all of the things that are holding us back from following God. Um, if Samuel said, "Lord, I'll follow you, but you know if Peter would have said, "I can't put my nets down yet." Yeah. Um, then we have these very different call stories. Uh, and so in the same way, like what is it in your life? What is it in my life that I need to let go of to be reconciled to God, to actually follow that call, to listen and to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so my prayer for you all this week is to be able to maybe identify one or two or a few of those things that maybe you're holding on to, but need to let go of and, and give to God. Um, so yeah. Yeah, and, and we know that the conversation doesn't end here. It's just a way that we kind of open the conversation and start it. Um, this is a rich text, um, and just a discipline of surrender is huge. And so where are we kind of surrendering our lives to God um, and knowing that eternal flame lives within us, but also within one another, and seeing that and encouraging us all um, to be brighter in kind of a season which feels kind of dark and isolating, where can we still continue to be God's light? Um, so feel free to comment below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, and there's a question box as well. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, we'd love to answer them um, about anything. Faith, life. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. And if Whatever. we can't answer it, we're cool. not going to let you. We'll just ask somebody who can help us answer it. For sure. Uh, yeah, we are very excited to be able to be a part of this community, to keep the conversation going on our end. Um, but like Lindsay's saying, just continuing that conversation within your community um, and within your circles. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you guys for joining another episode of The New Normal. Uh, shout out to Zach and his candle in the background, that eternal flame. Eternal flame. <laughs> it's a soy candle, so it does burn pretty long. <laughs> so, so yes, we'll see you next time on The New Normal. Bye, everyone. Bye, y'all.